Hey guys, Dr. Justin Marcajani here today. We're gonna be dealing with the topic of kidney issues and protein consumption. Does eating protein put stress on your kidneys? This is a great topic. Again, I think there's a lot of misinformation out there. I'm hoping to straighten it up a little bit for you guys today. All right, so before we do, smash the like button, comments down below, we'll respond, and make sure you guys uh, share with friends and family. All right, let's dive in. Let me give you a little anatomy review here so you guys know what you're looking at. So this is our kidney here on the left. We have two of them on average. You get anomalies every now and then. And in these kidneys, you have a functional unit, which is known as the nephron. This is what's actually kind of filtering. You have one million of these. And then the glomerulus is the actual filter part. Blood goes through these. These capillaries exchange dirty blood with clean blood. Goes back to the heart and lungs. Goes throughout the body. Fully oxygenated. Blood is clean. Now, when you go under dialysis, essentially, you have a machine doing what the kidney would be doing. So that's how dialysis works. And essentially, what damages this nephron? What damages the glomeruli? What is the underlying driving fact of it? Well, a couple things here out of the gate. Most people over time have thought protein is damaging because isn't protein recommended if you have chronic kidney disease? Well, that is true. I mean, if you have a lot of kidney stress already, sometimes protein could be a little bit hard on your kidneys. It's good to keep that in mind. Now, check out this meta-analysis from 2018. Interesting findings here, but it says, based on the findings, our meta-analysis on protein-restricted diets may reduce the state or decline of renal function if you already have kidney disease. We see that there out of the gates. However, it says, it says, however, the optimal level of protein intake in different participants left unanswered, and it says that it did not produce a clear beneficial effect for all cause death events. It means protein consumption in and of itself is not going to increase your likelihood to die, not, not even close. But if you have kidney disease already, that you may want to cut protein down a little bit. That may be a good thing to look at, but it's not the underlying cause. Well, what is the underlying cause? In my belief, looking at the data, working with patients for over 15 years, I believe insulin resistance is going to be the root underlying cause. Be a couple reasons. So one, IR, that stands for insulin resistance, contributes to the progression of renal disease by worsening renal hemodynamics. That means it's going to cause more um, sympathetic nervous system, more of your adrenals getting whipped. It's going to cause more hormones that will hold on to sodium, which will hold on to fluid, which will increase blood pressure, make it harder for your heart to beat. Your heart will get bigger, put more stress on the kidneys, increase blood pressure. When the blood pressure is really high, your kidneys are forced to push things through there faster which means it leaves more junk in the blood not filtered out. So again, insulin resistance is the big thing. Now, insulin resistance is nothing more than your, your cells are making lots of insulin in response to primarily carbohydrate in your body. So it's typically going to make more carbs, more, more insulin to more process and higher carbohydrate, higher glycemic load or index type of carbohydrates. Think of your flour and grains are going to be the highest you know, processed sugar, your pop, your added sugar and glucose to drinks and foods. Then you're going to have like your, maybe your really high sugar fruits that are very high in fructose. Then you have your starches, which are more complex, right? Starches are more complex, lots of glucose molecules together. They're more time release, also pretty nutrient dense. And then you're going to have your, um, your non-starchy vegetables will be the lowest, your, your broccoli, your um, spinach, your kale, those things that are going to be relatively very low in carbohydrate, but also very nutrient dense. So really important to think about that big picture. Now, what drives this? So when we have high levels of insulin, your cells become numb to it. So you continue to make more and more insulin. That insulin has to go somewhere. So it's actually circulating through your blood. It's going through the kidneys. Insulin in and of itself going through the kidneys can be very stressful, as I mentioned, on the hemodynamics of the kidneys. It's gonna put more stress. It's also gonna create advanced glycation end products due to all the proteins in there being sugar-coated. That's gonna create more oxidative stress and more damage to that tissue and to that glomeruli. And that glomeruli, that functional unit, and that filter is now gonna be damaged and not gonna be able to filter out a lot of the junk in your bloodstream. So high levels of insulin, your cells start to produce more of it. Your beta cells of the pancreas produce more insulin due to the resistance of it. Then you also have glucose, which is what your insulin's responding to. So that creates the glycation and thus more stress on the kidneys. So this study that in 2019 or 18, it showed essentially that if you have lots of kidney issues already, maybe reducing protein may help. I do agree with that. I think that makes sense. That's kind of standard of care. But the question is, is that what caused the issue to begin with? Most people assume, well, if we're pulling off protein, there, that must have been a contributing factor, right? It's kind of like, you know, you're like... Um, you know, you're just, you're making some assumptions and logical steps to get there, but it's not true. It's mostly going to be the high insulin and glucose. That's why 80% of all kidney transplants, guess who they go to? They go to diabetics. 
And so underlying issue is you have to lower the protein, probably cut it in half. You want to make sure you have enough so you're not going sarcopenic and wasting muscle, but you would replace the calories that you were getting with healthy fats. That's going to be the key. So you're not going into an over calorie deficit, which causes more muscle wasting as well, right? You can get rhabdo by muscle wasting too much and that puts stress on the kidneys too, but you want to replace those calories with good healthy fats, good healthy saturated fats, good healthy um, plant-based fats that are going to be cold pressed and not oxidized, not through junky that of um, seed oils and processed vegetables like you know canola and, and soy and those kind of things. So big picture, you have a good understanding of what the big underlying issue is. Plus, if you have more muscle mass, you're going to spit off more creatinine. You're going to spit off more creatinine, which is going to be a problem for your kidneys too. And then also your EGFR may go higher because you're spitting off more creatinine because you're, it's a muscle breakdown byproduct. So if you're lifting a lot of weights, you're eating a lot of protein, you may see more muscle breakdown does not necessarily mean that your kidneys are under a lot of stress. So really good to think about it like that. Um, and then also there's other markers that you can look at besides just your EGFR, want that above 60, and then want your creatinine uh, to be typically 0.7 to 1.1. And then we have our bun. Those are the two markers we look at. Bun's another protein breakdown marker. That stands for blood, urea, nitrogen. That's going to look at protein breakdown. Those could easily go high if we have high levels of protein or we're lifting within let's say two days before a test, or we're just eating a lot of protein in general. Again, if you're not eating a lot of the excess carbohydrates and processed foods, I think you are okay out of the gate. It's one other protein marker that you can look at for kidney function. The other marker you wanna look at is cystatin C is the other marker. That's a protein marker that it's, you have proteins made by the cells. So it's not looking at internal protein that you're consuming. It's looking at protein being produced by your cells. If that starts to accumulate, then you know your kidneys are not filtering that out. So it takes out the, the vector of protein coming in your mouth and you're lifting. It's looking more at the cellular production of protein. That's cystatin C. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, click down below, let me know. Thumbs up, comments down below, share with family and friends. If you want to dive in and you need functional support for blood sugar or any other metabolic issues, there'll be a link down below where you can reach out to my staff and team worldwide and provide that support for you. All right, guys, have an awesome day. Take care. Bye.